Hello, everybody. In this lesson, we are going to learn about algebraic expressions and the vocabulary associated with the algebraic expressions. First, an algebraic expression is a symbolic representation of mathematical operations that involve both numbers and variables. If I don't have variables, then it's just a numeric expression. Put an X in there and it becomes algebraic. So here's an example of an algebraic expression. 3 times a quantity x minus 1 plus 4. And whenever you see parentheses in an algebraic expression, it is read, the thing in parentheses is read as the quantity. You don't say 3 open parentheses x minus 1 close parentheses. You say 3 times a quantity of x minus 1, right? Okay, now you'll notice that there is no equal sign because if you have an equal sign and more stuff, then it's no longer an expression, it's an equation. Now, of course, equations are usually made up of two expressions that are set equal to each other. But we're going to start off with expressions. One important word that you're going to see quite often all throughout algebra is the word term. And a term can be just a number, it could be just a variable, or it could be the product or quotients of numbers and variables. And they are usually separated by addition or subtraction. And expressions are made up of terms. And you have to be able to distinguish the separate terms because when we name things in the future, like polynomials, they're going to be named by their number of terms. So here are some examples of some terms. Two is an example of a term. It's just a number, okay? And then three times x is an example of a term. And remember, if you see a number right next to a variable and there's no operation, there is an implied multiplication there, right? And then 3x to the fourth is a term, and 3 to the x power is an example of a term. So if I have this expression, 3x squared plus 4x plus 1, this is an algebraic expression made up of three separate terms because they are separated by additions. So 3x squared is a term, 4x is a term, and 1 is a term. Now, another super important vocabulary word is this word, coefficient. And it is the numeric factor in a term. Not an exponent, it's the number multiplied by the variables in the term. Okay, so if I look at 3x, 3 and x are each factors of this term. The numeric factor is 3. Therefore, the coefficient of this term is 3. And then if I look at this one, negative 18x to the fourth, its coefficient is negative 18. So you can think of it as the number in front of the variable. And these are straightforward examples. These next three, not so straightforward. Now when I have a quotient like this, x over 5, this has a coefficient as well, but it's not 5. You have to rewrite the term so it has a multiplication. And so x divided by 5 is the same thing as x times 1 fifth. And if I use the commutative property and rearrange this so that it is 1 fifth x, then I can see that the coefficient of this one is 1 fifth. Now here are the other two tricky ones. I don't see a number in front of this, I just see the negative symbol. And what this means is that I have negative 1 x. But no one ever writes the 1 when it's multiplication. It's unnecessary. So this one's coefficient is negative 1. And if you don't see any number at all, no symbol or anything, it's the same deal. There is a 1 times x to the 7th. So its coefficient is 1. Okay, so remember, it's a numeric factor. If it looks like it's missing, it's a 1. If it's x divided by some number, you have to change it so it's a fraction times x and then the fraction becomes your coefficient. Now to the meat and potatoes of expressions and the work that you're going to have to do in class, and that is to evaluate an algebraic expression. And evaluate just means to substitute in some values and then simplify it. Now, you get to use a calculator in class, so the simplification part is really easy. It's just an order of operations problem. The thing that you have to be super careful with is the substitution part. And if you want to get this right every single time, then what you are going to do is you are going to substitute in the number into the expression 
inside of parentheses. Okay, and I'll show you why with the second example. This one's not so important for the parentheses, but fractions and negatives, super important to use the parentheses. All right, so for this one, if I want to substitute in and simplify, that means wherever I see x, I'm going to replace it with 5. So the math that I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2, and I have to remember that when I see a number next to a variable, it means multiplication. So I just plop down a 5 in parentheses, and then plus 4 times, I'm going to put some brackets there, 5 minus 3. Okay, now this is a straight up order of operations problem, and you can just follow the order of operations and simplify, or you can use your trusty graphing calculator that automatically does the order of operations. So I type in negative 2, open parentheses 5, and then plus 4, open up some parentheses. I could do the parentheses again if I want. And then do minus 3, close parentheses. And then make sure that looks correct. Negative 2, 5, 4, 5, negative 3. Two sets of parentheses closed off here, one over there. Press enter, and oh look, the answer is negative 2. So you must be thinking to yourself, wow, that's super easy. I'm never going to get that wrong, ever, with the graphing calculator. And then I give you this example. All right, so I've mentioned this in class several times. You have to make sure your notation matches your intention. So if you look at this expression here, x squared minus 2 to the x minus 4x for x equals negative 1, and I ask you to evaluate, for this one here, I need to square negative 1. So I have to make sure my notation matches the squaring of negative 1. So if you write this, you are going to get this incorrect because this is not the square of negative 1. This is the opposite of 1 squared. So it's the most missed thing in algebra. If you remember, though, put everything inside of parentheses when you substitute, then you're not going to make that mistake. So negative 1 quantity squared minus 2 to the negative 1 power minus 4 times negative 1. And then I can just, once again, rely on my trusted calculator. Negative 1 squared minus 2 raised to the negative 1, minus 4 times negative 1. Make sure that looks right. Negative 1 squared, minus 2 to the negative 1, 4 times negative 1, press enter, and I get 4.5, and oh no, I like fractions better. Math 1, bam, 9 halves. So now this thing here follows the order of operations. So you have to make sure you understand what you are asking it to do. And if you had typed in this thing without the parentheses, then you get a very different answer. 2.5, which would be horribly incorrect. So you have to know what this is asking you to do, and you have to know the correct way to write it. But if you remember, just replace the x with the number inside of parentheses, then you are always going to get it correct. So just do that.